Okay guys, so let us discuss about the function of salt bridge sekejap. Okay, so salt bridge ni basically ialah inverted YouTube gel yang ada uh, solution of an inner electrolyte such as KCL and a two SO4 dengan NH4 and a tray. But then in your level, you'll be using KCL lah as you punya salt bridge. Function dia ada dua. Okay, the first one ialah to maintain electrical neutrality, neutral tau, neutral bukan natural because some of my students be thinking uh, neutral ni sama dengan natural, no, okay, neutral tak sama dengan natural, this is not some kind of natural beauty ke apa, no, we are talking about to maintain the electrical tool, kita nak make sure electrical tool jet remain neutral, okay, the other function ialah tanpa salt bridge ni, you tak akan dapat reading kat book meter. Sebab apa? Sebab salt bridge ni dia akan completekan the circuit. Okay, so that's why bila you lukis voltage cell, you wajib letak salt bridge because salt bridge dia akan completekan circuit sebab dia akan allow the ions uh, move from one half cell to other. Alright, so what happen kalau tak ada salt bridge? Tadi kan Miss bagi tahu kalau tak ada salt bridge, you tak akan dapat reading kat book meter and also salt bridge kalau tak ada, dia tak completekan the circuit. Uh, sebab dia tak dapat helps to maintain the electrical neutrality. Okay, because why? If let's see you ada this kind of uh, apa tu? voltaic cell. Di mana zinc ni berada dekat anode. Anode kan akan undergoes oxidation. Oxidation dia akan lose electron, isn't it? So, bila dia lose electron, okay, the concentration of zinc 2 plus in this beaker akan bertambah. So, bila let's say concentration of ion zinc ni bertambah banyak, dia tak turn neutral. Uh, therefore, the reaction akan stop. Okay. Uh, so, bila reaction tu stop, uh, makanya you tak dapatlah reading dekat voltmeter ni. Alright. Uh, so, this excess charge build up can be reduced by using a salt bridge. Okay guys, how does the cell maintain its electrical neutrality? So basically, if let's say you ada this kind of voltaic cell where the zinc is at the anode and zinc ni akan undergo process oxidation and copper ni berada di cathode dan dia akan undergo process reduction and this is your salt bridge. Okay, uh, contohnya salt bridge your KCL uh, and actually uh, the negative ions Cl- minus Uh, negative ions daripada KCL tu akan move to the anode half cell sebab kenapa? and then positive ions pula akan move to the cathode half cell ha, sebab kenapa ya? because okay, bila zinc ni undergo process oxidation dia akan menghasilkan zinc 2 plus ions and these ions akan enter the solution and cause an overall excess of positive charge so what happened here is the Cl minus ions from the salt bridge akan move into the zinc half cell untuk neutralizekan the excess zinc 2 plus while you know that copper 2 plus here dia kena pluskan dengan elektron kan dia akan gain elektron dalam proses reduction untuk form copper atom in a solid phase okay so this copper 2 plus ions ni dia akan meninggalkan solution so bila dia tinggalkan solution it will cause an overall excess of negative charge therefore Uh, we choose that the positive ions K plus from the salt bridge ni akan move to the into the copper half cell so that it will neutralize the excess SO4 to minus. Okay, after that the electro, electrical neutrality will be maintained. Okay, so this is uh, basically the summarize apa yang Mr. Rangkan before this. Okay, so next, we move on with uh, one of the most important thing in a galvanic cell or voltaic cell, which is known as electrode or reduction potential, with a symbol E besar. Okay, um, basically, electrode or reduction potential ni they boleh measure the ability of a half cell to attract electrons towards it, or uh, basically, they boleh bagi tahu the potential difference between the electrode and the solution in a half cell, and the unit is in volt. Okay, uh, tapi this is uh, yang paling famous lah, SRP. SRP ni ialah standard reduction potential. Uh, tapi standard electron potential pun is the same thing too. But then usually we call it as standard reduction potential. Basically, it's just the same thing as standard electron potential. Uh, but then we usually, uh, selalunya orang panggil standard reduction potential ni SRP. And since that it happened at the standard condition, you kena letak bulat ke atas 
E. Okay. Uh, sebab simbol E, E adalah electrode ataupun reduction potential. Since it happen at the standard condition, you need to put bullet ke atas tu. Uh, you should know lah kalau standard conditions tu, that means the concentration of solution kena 1 molar. The pressure of the gas must be 180 m and the temperature must be 25 degrees Celsius. Alright, so this is the standard reduction potential value. This is the SRP value lah. Basically, how can you get that? You can get that from the standard reduction potential table. Uh, nanti mesti tunjukkan lah table uh, nanti. Tapi basically, um, you tak perlu pun nak kena hafal table tu because uh, usually dalam soalan, dia just bagi, bagi equation dengan bagi SRP value. So, tugas kamu ialah nak tentukan je sama ada the half cell equation belongs to the cathode ke belongs to the anode. Dia akan buat oxidation ke buat reduction. Okay. So, you tak perlu risau pasal the, bell, uh, the table. You just kena tahu sahaja value dia tu kalau let's say uh, macam mana bentuk dia. Uh, macam mana dah bentuk dia. And then, uh, you should know that kalau let's say you nak tahu siapa yang kat cathode, siapa yang kat anode. Uh, you should know that the higher the SRP value, uh, the more the tendency dia untuk jadi dekat cathode. That means the more the tendency dia untuk buat reduction. Okay, so in this case, if let's say between this copper and zinc, which one yang akan undergo uh, reduction, which one yang akan undergo oxidation, which one yang dekat cathode, which one dekat anode. So, you tengoklah SRP value masing-masing. Okay, this copper has a higher SRP value compared to zinc. Therefore, this copper must be at the cathode and dia akan undergo reduction and zinc ni akan berada dekat anode and undergo oxidation. Alright, so this is the SRP table that I'm talking about. Okay, so dia ada macam-macam half cell reaction equations with the values. Uh, you tak perlu hafal pun uh, sebab basically dalam exam nanti dia akan bagilah SRP value untuk half cell. Cuma ni sometimes so, soalan tutorial je macam kadang-kadang tak bagi. Uh, so kalau tak bagi, you kena tengok lah the SRP value dekat SRP table ni. Okay, uh, basically um, the sign of the SRP ni akan berubah kalau let's say direction is reverse, okay. Uh, tapi dia tak akan berubah dia punya value ni kalau let's say kamu kena kalikan dia by a factor of 2 ke. This is not a thermal chemistry where bila you kena kena kalikan by a factor of 2, everything needs to kalikan dengan 2 and no. Okay, you nak balance, you balancekan je the chemical equation but the SRP value will still be maintained. If you look at here, okay, macam you tengok ni eh. Uh, contohnya, I half kan this half cell equation. So, if I half kan this half cell equation, mesti you fikir akan affect the SRP value kan? No, it will not affect. Okay, although that it is half the half cell reaction equation, the half already, tapi dia punya SRP value still remain the same. But, if I reverse the equation, the sign will be changed. Itu je lah perubahan dia. Okay guys, the next important thing in galvanic cell ataupun voltaic cell ni ialah cell potential ataupun standard cell potential. Cell potential ni, dia punya simbol dia ialah E besar and then you tulis cell kat bawah. Macam tu. Tapi kalau if it, if it happens at the standard condition, which the gas pressure kena 1 atm, concentration must be 1 molar and then the temperature must be at 25 degrees Celsius, that means it happened at standard condition, that's why we call it as standard cell potential, then you just gonna letak bulat saja dekat atas tu nak membezakan cell potential dengan standard cell potential, tapi by definition, cell potential ni sama je, cuma ni kalau standard, you just letak je lah definition at standard condition, tapi basically cell potential ni, dia dapat kira the difference in electrical potential between the anode and cathode. So, for example, if let's say you ada voltaic cell kan, you ada dua jenis half cell, uh, satu anode, satu lagi cathode, kan you connectkan the anode dengan cathode ni by a voltmeter and ada solvage kat sini. Okay, so basically, this is the voltmeter lah yang kalau kamu nanti nak buat eksperimen pasal voltaic cell ni, this is the voltmeter that we are talking about. So, this voltmeter actually any reading yang comes from the voltmeter ni is actually your cell potential, E cell. Okay? Uh, 
Alright, so basically, cell potential ni is also known as cell voltage ataupun EMF, electromotive force. And kalau let's say you buat eksperimen, you boleh dapatkan value of your cell potential dekat voltmeter. Tapi, kalau let's say you tak buat eksperimen, you nak jawab exam kan, uh, you nak buat tutorial kan. So, kalau you nak cari you punya E-cell ataupun cell potential, you boleh gunakan this dual formula. Okay, but I lagi prefer this formula compared to this one. Because this formula, you boleh ambil SRP value directly from apa tu, apa yang... Apa, from the table lah, you tak perlu nak reverse kan ke apa ke because this formula you need to reverse sometimes kalau let's say dia tak menepati uh, apa tu, reduction ke oxidation punya uh, chemical equation so I prefer this one because you boleh ambil direct dia punya SRP value ok so let's look at example 1 dia suruh kamu calculate the standard cell potential given these two half equations ok first thing first that you need to do ialah you need to know what is standard cell potential. Uh, standard cell potential ni at least you kena tahu dia punya simbol lah ya. Yeah? So, simbol untuk standard cell potential ni ialah E bulat cell. And the formula ialah uh, E bulat cell ni is equal to E bulat cathode minus E bulat anode. E bulat cathode minus E bulat anode ni this is what we call as standard half cell. Okay? Standard half cell tak sama dengan standard cell potential, ok? Sebab standard half cell, ok? Itulah yang kita namakan sebagai SRP value. SRP, standard reduction potential. Half cell. Kenapa half cell? Because um, it can be anode, it can be cathode. Half cell tu anode dengan cathode lah, ok? Uh, so, sekarang ni, um, from this formula, you kena cari mana satu yang berada di cathode, mana satu berada di anode. Okay, so sebab nak tahu mana satu berada di cathode dengan anode, uh, you boleh refer dekat dia punya SRP value. SRP ni apa? Standard Reduction Potential. So, where is the SRP value? Here, this is the SRP value, Standard Reduction Potential value. So, untuk tentukan mana satu yang dekat cathode dengan anode, we just need to know the greater the SRP value, the more dia punya tendency untuk jadi cathode. Okay, so if you look at these two half cell, uh, ada dua half cell kat sini. So, which one yang cathode? Copper lah because copper ada greater SRP value. So, copper will be cathode. Okay, zinc will be anode. So, this E bulat cathode ni ialah 0.34. Okay. So, kiranya SRP untuk cathode ialah positif 0.34. SRP value untuk anode ialah negatif 0.76. So, you masukkan saja, and then dah dapat dah jawapan. As easy as that. Okay, so for the next example, dia suruh kamu calculate the standard cell potential of the following electrochemical cell. Okay, dia bagi cell notation and dia bagi dua half cell equations dengan dua SRP value kat sini uh, respectively. So, sekarang ni dia suruh kamu cari standard cell potential. As usual, standard cell potential ni ialah E bulat cell. You tahu E bulat cell is equal to E bulat cathode minus E bulat anode. Okay, and then actually dia tak suruh pun kamu cari overall cell reaction equation. So, this is actually a little bit unnecessary lah. Okay. So, this one macam you tak perlu buat sangat pun. Tapi kalau let's say you eager to know then it's fine lah. Boleh lah buat sebab kiranya kalau kat sini dia nak standard cell potential je. So, you kena tentukan je lah siapa yang ketot, siapa yang not. Nak tentukan siapa ketot dengan not, you tengok dekat cell notation ni sendiri. You dah tahu siapa dekat ketot, siapa dekat not. Which kat sini you kena tahu A, B, C. So, your not ialah cobalt. Okay. So, anode you cobalt and then cathode you silver. Ah, uh, Therefore, the SRP untuk cathode ialah positif 0.8 uh, and then SRP untuk your anode ialah negatif 0.28. So, masukkan saja dah dapat dah you punya standard cell potential and this is actually is quite unnecessary tapi just nak show lah walaupun um, kalau let's say lah 
kamu kena buat half cell reaction equation dengan overall cell reaction equation, you know that you punya cathode ni, you kena kalikan dengan dua untuk balancekan dia punya elektron supaya tapi ni nak bagi tahu kat sini kan mesti saya bagi tahu previously kalau kamu kalikan dengan dua dia punya value tak akan berubah value dia still 0.8 tu je lah nak tunjuk tapi this is quite unnecessary lah because soalan nak tanya standard cell potential so you kira je lah macam tu je tentukan mana satu yang cathode mana satu anode masuk ke dalam formula dan tak it tu je Okay, so for the last example, this will come to calculate the cell potential for the following reaction. Ha, tengok ni. Dia bagi kamu SRP, dia bagi kamu half cell equations yang sangat banyak dan juga SRP value yang sangat banyak. So, you must be wondering, which one aku nak guna ni? Sebab dalam formula ada dua je, you kena tentukan siapa cathode, you kena tentukan siapa anode. Uh, so, by looking at this uh, redox reaction equation, you kena tentukan lah mana satu yang undergoes oxidation, mana satu yang undergoes reduction. Okay, so from there nanti you boleh, uh, apa tu, you boleh lah narrow down kan you punya half cell yang terlibat dalam this redox reaction equation. Alright, so for the solution, okay, the first step is you need to determine the punya half cell equation yang terlibat dalam this redox reaction equation. So, out of many, you have determined that there is only two yang related to this redox reaction equation. Okay, and after that, you determine which one is cathode, which one is anode. So, you can determine this by looking at the SRP value. So, the one yang ada higher SRP value should be at the cathode. Okay, and yang ada low SRP value, you letak dekat anode lah. After that, you dah determine siapa yang anode, siapa yang cathode. Time for you to calculate your standard cell potential by using this formula. You masukkan saja SRP value for cathode which is positive 1.51 volt. And then uh, the SRP value for anode ialah positive 0.77. And after that, you akan dapatlah you punya... Uh, Standard cell potential U ialah positif 0.74 volt.